Hey there! Last July 26 marked the start of three jam-packed days of game development fun. This year, the second Philippine Game Development Expo or PGDX was held, well, here in the Philippines. The expo itself was a bunch of stalls showcasing their cool products, big companies showing their support towards the growing game development company, and some other small but established developers showcasing their latest and newest games. They also provide a bunch of workshops talking about publishing or working with big names like Xbox or Sony. However, the best section has to be the Indie Game Stars, where any budding developer can sign up, get the booth, and showcase their game to the other expo goers. Last year, I didn't get the chance to prepare anything for it, but I wasn't going to let things pass this year. And of course, I just had to show my game, open fair. Wait, hold on. The story doesn't start on the day of the expo itself, no. This starts all the way to last year's expo, kind of. Last year, I was taking an internship under a local game development company. Though I only did quality assurance during the work days, I was rewarded with getting the chance to go to the expo as a mini workforce. Some extra eyes to watch over the indie game star section. And I don't think I need to explain how absolutely starstruck I was by everything going on. And even though I didn't have my own booth, a few people were still curious enough to get to know me and what I can do. So the goal was set. I knew that I had to get my own game in next year. Unfortunately, I couldn't really work on Open Fire much the following months. You can see that in my upload schedule. I had to hunker down and focus on schoolwork, so let's just skip to when I got more work done. Every other week or so, I would try to check on Facebook or Twitter about any news on the next expo. Granted, there were some other ones that I could've tried to sign up for, but there's just something about PGDX that really excited me. Sometime in February, I checked just in time to see the signups open. Signups seemed pretty standard. I just had to send a link to my game, fill out some information, and then upload a poster. A poster. Huh. One semester later, we are finally at PGDX! I quickly head to my own booth and prepare my setup. I got to meet a nice family in charge of a few puzzle game booths. The booth next to mine had a cool Filipino Monster Girl RPG game. I ate a few hot dogs, played other indie games, got to meet a lot of interesting people, and collected a bunch of business cards. <laughs> my collection goes. I attended a few fun workshops, and on the three different days, I had a different friend or buddy helping me at the booth. Thank you ever so much, everyone. Not to mention, I didn't actually have a laptop to present it, and thank you to my sister for that. The first day went okay, it was a Friday. Most people that attended my booth were other goers, as well as some cool business people. Near the end of the day, one person came on with one of those AR headsets and just wanted to watch me play my game. And just as I was packing up, a different person really wanted to try it. So I rebooted my laptop just so I could show them. The second day was a Saturday, and as expected, a lot more people had arrived. I'll save comments on Open Fire for the end of the presentation, but I met a lot of people who knew Mega Man Battle Network that day, and was pretty stoked to see my game pay homage to it. The third day was both chill yet stressful. A lot of people still went to the indie section, but the big companies were also drawing a lot of attention with their last day giveaways. I was still able to meet a few more people with a lot more comments on the games, play patterns, and such. And finally, before I left, I was able to snag my lovely Open Fire poster. I was able to learn a lot, but most importantly, I received a lot of very good feedback for how I can take the game forward. So, first comments out of the way, yes, the game is still unfinished. I did a lot of last minute finagling just to make sure the game was at the very least playable for when I presented it. I had a really basic gameplay cycle, however on the first day some things were clearly already wrong with my build. For one, SMG just didn't work in the game. You can find her in the character select, but when you load the level she's just gone. Also, half of the bosses did not appear after clearing the levels, and there's also just the particular game crash that happens now and then, but those are just the things I can't fix. What about the things I can improve on? On the last day, a cool customer appeared wanting to comment on the general art style that I had going. Although my pixel art was impressive, hehe, <laughs> the playable characters kind of blended in with the backgrounds. Truth be told, I have been noticing this issue, but I never really knew how to fix it. His suggestion was to look at Sonic Advanced backgrounds as well as to try utilizing more anti-aliasing, which I will also admit I haven't really tried. As for the characters, a lot of these little guys are in need of a tune-up and animation as well. They also suggested practicing some pixel animations, but that sounds even harder to execute on a personal level. Nevertheless, it's some good notes. The UI was also a quick pain point. Seeing a bit of inconsistencies in text as well as the buttons. The default button stood out like sore thumbs. And the difference in fonts between the cards and the gameplay, well, a lot of people didn't like that. And I don't think I like it either. Now, whenever I was sharing the game to someone new, I would have to do my introductory spiel of how you are part of a peacekeeping team between the islands. Then, one of the players struck me with, 
you could probably just put all of that in a small cutscene where the game starts. I never really thought about that. I definitely don't want just a wall of text, but a mini comic in the game to show some lore may really spike the interest of some new people. And did I mention the tutorial wasn't working again? Yeah, I'm not sure why it didn't work on X, but guess I should investigate that soon too. I felt bad having to show a lot of unfinished enemies, especially unfinished bosses, but people seem to be excited to see more of them in the future. A feature I've actually started working on since the end of the expo is a preview system my partner suggested. The preview always gives the player an idea on what certain cards may do. I will still stand by wanting the player to learn and understand the cards through playing them at least once, but a preview really won't hurt anyone. I've also started reworking a better map select screen. Now instead of going around the different islands, you can just focus on one island and focus on eliminating the encounters there. Once done, the boss of the area appears for you to take down. And additional suggestion was for the better cards to appear after beating the boss, which is very smart. Why didn't I think of that? The general advice I learned was to push through with the Steam page. This way, more players can find the game and see its progress as I develop it. Even though publishing to Steam has its cost, a passion project such as mine, especially a solo development, will pay for itself eventually. At least that's what they said. I've also been advised to aim for a mobile version of the game to get more people to play it. Since the game is quite simple as controls, I can already see how to prepare it for that Play Store release. But I will try to finish the game first, of course. CG Dex was a fun and enriching experience. I can't believe I still got the chance to share my game with so many people. I learned a lot from the other independent developers and also learned a few tricks from the different workshops that I went to. I know this wasn't like the other devlogs, but I think it was still very much worth sharing to all of you. I had a wonderful time at PGDX and can't wait to attend again with a different game. Or maybe an established studio for once. Who knows? But that's it for now. I am the Noontime Dreamer. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a lovely afternoon and never stop. Amen.